I was stationed in Rhode Island and I was a musician. I was a drummer in the uh, military band, which was great. I stayed there for about a year and then I asked for a transfer because it got boring. And I got transferred to the LST. Landing, it's called the landing ship tank. Finally, we were shipped to England. And that, that ride, it was so bad that we rocked. I'm telling you, I thought any, any moment we were going to sink. But we didn't, and we made it. But I tell you, uh, two two ships did get torpedoed in the voyage to England, and that was a tragedy. I'll never forget that. The sailors were in the water, asking for help, and we couldn't stop to pick them up. We weren't allowed. Of course, if we did it, we'd be a sitting duck for the submarines. We were loaded. I don't know what we were, I don't remember what we were carrying, but we were loaded. Jeeps, small trucks, ammunition, oil, whatever. Finally got into England, unloaded, and we were hanging around for a while, waiting for orders. Finally it came through that they just said, we're going, going aboard, get ready. Until we got out to sea that we actually heard that we were invading France. And that, that trip was called the, the Normandy invasion. And when we reached it, almost, I think we were a few miles, maybe five, six miles away from the shore I could, we could look out, and I, I'm telling you, the sight was unbelievable. There were thousands of ships all around. You can look, and man, you think it was an armada. I, I mean, thousands of ships. And all the way, all at once, I, the you know, word got around. Every man on a ship that got a gun, get on the right side or the fan tail of the ship. We were on our way, and then we heard the big ships letting off on their big guns, and my God. And that went on for about hours. I bet that bombing went on for hours. Finally, we were told uh, to, we're going we're gonna to hit the shore. And so far, the, I, I think the Marines went in first to uh, save the beach so other ships could come in. And we were on a type ship that we could roll right up on the beach, unload our equipment or whatever we, ha we have. And, you know, our type ship was that we only could come in on the high tide and land on the, on the beach and open up our bows and we let off all what we had. Then we had to wait till the, the tide went out by the time we unloaded and we had to wait there all night to uh, wait for the tide to come in so we could pull out. That's the type of ship we were. Well, we were there all night, and uh, when we got up in the morning, the beach was secured, and there were thousands of soldiers, thousands, coming from other ships, letting off troops, equipment, tanks, trucks. Oh, that beach was like a well, finally we had breakfast, and then about maybe five, six hours after we landed, 
finally we were allowed free time and I, I took a walk on the beach and, what, and, and you can imagine what I saw. I saw hundreds and hundreds of body bags along the beach. Can't imagine. I couldn't even count how many there were out there, body bags. Finally, we got the load, we got the order that we were going to take a load of body bags to, to England. And I believe we took about a couple of hundred, we laid them out on the, on, in the hole of the ship. And then they started to bring in more, but we had no more room. Uh, we noticed that they started to stack body bags on top of body bags in order to get more. Uh, the captain saw that, he stopped it. He said, no, you're not, you're not going to do that. Got our load all settled down, and we took off for England, and we, and unload, which was very sad. We were hung, we hung around and we start we started uh, going back and forth to England. I think we made about ten or fifteen trips with cargo going to France. Uh, and what, 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 on the way back we'd be empty. But this time we took a load of prisoners, German prisoners. Everybody stripped down, all the Germans, stripped down all their clothes. And then we issued like cover overalls. Now before that we, we threw them soap. We don't carry too much fresh water. So we use the salt water. And then for a few, moments we shot them fresh water so they could rinse off but I bet you the average age of all them prisoners was about the oldest for maybe was 15 and younger it was uh, somewhere as low as 12 years old soldiers and they were so skinny they were starving and we gave them uh, box lunch. And a few spoke English, a few talked to them, and they were glad they, they were caught, actually. They would laugh and threw them cigarettes, whatever we had. So and in the meantime, we unloaded. and make a few more trips from England to France. And we did that for about, oh, I would say, about a month or so. Yeah, well, I know, I, you know, the only time I talk about it is when somebody, but I, I, I didn't want to remember those days, especially that, 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 that morning when I saw the body bags that, that, that I would never, never forget. It was a terrible time that you had uh, something you had to do, Dad, and uh, all those men we remember. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you for being there because it was the start of the end of that war. Yeah, I was just the beginning. For a while. Uh, well, thank you for all your service, Dad. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Love you. Love you.